Kai, what what's the best gig you ever had? The best, the, well, okay, you know, I don't. The best gig is hard to say because, of course, every time I play at the Curl Folk Festival, that's wonderful, and I had a really good gig on my 50th birthday at Banjo Jim's, and I'm I'm hoping to play at the Gig Maven Ides of March party on March 15th at Emos, so that could well be the best gig I ever do. The best gig, huh? There was one time, uh, there was a, a festival in, in the Bronx. It was a free festival, outdoor festival. And I don't know, the reason I think it might be the best gig is because the, the way that I got the gig was the best way to get a gig, I'd say. is This was back when I used to play, you know, on the streets of Greenwich Village. And me and my friends would go down and play on Bleecker Street, actually. And uh, one time I went down there, me and my friend Ray, and Ray had a couple friends, and we said, well, let's go play on the street, you know. So we were playing out there in the street, and people were just walking by and just not paying attention or anything to us at all. And so we're like, eh, what are we going to do? Hey, I got an idea. So we thought, okay. So we turned around, and we faced the building. We just faced the wall, and we sang a song, just like that. Well, by the time we looked around again, surely there was this big crowd just all over the place here. <laughs> had to top that so we figured well, okay well, let's so we lay down on the sidewalk and we sang a song like that the crowd just got bigger and bigger they loved us we passed the hat you know that's what we're trying to do is get a little money and all that in fact so this one guy says that's you guys are great what, what's the name of your band and we're like oh yeah we're the concrete singers you know <laughs> so the concrete singers okay listen i got this festival in the bronx next month will you come play it it's you know, we, we're going to make a post for everything, and your name will be on it. It's like, uh, well, yeah, you sure? Whatever. Yeah, what? Okay, got your phone number. Okay, sure. Well, as it turned out, um, you know, Ray was about to leave town. And his other friend, he didn't live in town anyway. So it was just two of us left. I lived in Manhattan. I could do it. And this guy, so I said I'd go down to his house the day of the festival and get him and we'd practice a couple songs and go to the festival. Well. I, I don't know what happened to him. I went down there and he was gone, he wasn't there, so I just went up and, and I did the festival all by myself. But the funny thing is the, uh, the, they did make a poster, but instead of the Concrete Singers, they called it the Concrete Band, which really is not as cool a name at all. The Concrete Singers was better, but anyway, so I, that, that's probably the best, best gig I ever did was myself playing as the Concrete Singers. <laughs> Well, what, what's the worst gig you ever had? Oh, hey, the worst gig. Well, that, that one's easy. I mean, that, this is like a story I tell people and I try to warn them against being a musician. You know, it's like, I was up in the Yukon Territory. I was in the capital city of the Yukon Territory, Whitehorse, which, you know, it's the capital city, so it's a lot more metropolitan than the rest of the Yukon, but there's still only 2,000 people or so in the town. But I was up there, I was there for a couple months, and uh, I had a friend there, he was a, a fiddler, he was classically trained, and uh, uh, really good, you know, just kind of like me, he liked kind of the, the odd stuff, and the weird, different, you know, kinds of ways to make music. So we hit it off just great, and he liked jazz, and he had all these kind of funky compositions and stuff like that, and he liked playing, uh, you know, the stuff that I wrote, for instance, you know. <laughs> So we got this gig a Tuesday night, so the place was called the Taku Lounge, and we got paid a four-week gig, $75 a piece. We were like, you know, this is really cool, this is great. But the thing was, see, there, there was, you know, there was a music community in, in Whitehorse, but they had a jam on Tuesday nights at, at this other big bar. So we, you know, so none of our people were going to come to the gig, because our gig, because they were at the jam. We thought, okay, well, that's all right, we'll do it anyway. So we played and, uh, you know, we tried to pull everything out we could that could possibly be accessible to a white horse patron at a redneck bar. And uh, the first two weekends were just, you know, the first two Tuesdays, they were just, you know, we said, okay, we'll do, we'll do better next week. We'll do better next week. Really will. So the third week we played. And we were up there, and the thing is, the stage it wasn't really a stage, but it was like where you stood to play your music. It was right by the entrance or the exit of the bar. So we were up there, and 
I'm singing away, Jacques is playing the fiddle, and this guy gets up and he stands right at the entrance right next to us while we're playing a song. He just stands there for like the, the rest of the song. There's like a whole minute or two left of the song. We finish the song and as usual nobody claps. And we're like, you know, we'll go over to this guy, I wonder what he's gonna say. And he says, <clears throat> I I was waiting till the end of the song because I wanted to make sure everybody heard me. This has got to be the worst music I have ever heard in my life. And he walks out. So, so, <laughs> so we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and we, you know, finish the finish the gig, of course, but <clears throat> that was <clears throat> that, that was pretty bad, you know. Now the next week was better because we went away and they couldn't get in touch with us, so when we come back, there was a note on Jacques' door saying, well, we couldn't contact you to cancel your gig, so here's the money. Please don't come in and play. So that was good. But here, you know, so, let me play this little song. This might explain a little better. Best is worse and worst is best. It's the way it is from east to west. West is east and east is west. And that's why worst is best. 